say nothing incriminating. <sighs> okay. Alright. I got this a little crooked. Ugh, one second. I feel like that's more. That's crooked too. Is that crooked? Yeah, it's a little crooked. Like, yeah, to the side. So, uh, right there. Oh, oh, no, that's too much. Yeah, oh, don't get hit by a car. All right, we trying to get the camera right. Okay, I think that's perfect. Yep. Okay, uh, if anybody's watching this, uh, please share this video uh all right we got a motorcycle in front of me so this gonna be a little loud so we're gonna wait a second for the motorcycle to pass uh for anybody that uh is not aware uh, i will point out that uh day 208 208 is 208 207 uh it's day 207 of occupied city hall uh we gonna let the it's, uh again we are outside on the street of city hall so it's gonna be a little loud we gonna let this motorcycle go by and i'll do some speaking What's up, what's up, brother? What's up? Okay, it is. Okay, so we are, this is uh, Occupy City Hall Day 208, uh, 207, Day 207, excuse me. Uh, uh, we came out here 207 days ago because 208 days ago, the uh, Rockford Police Department uh, shot Tyrus Jones uh, as he was running away, Officer Dominic McNeese. Uh, and then uh, we have stayed occupying uh, the area of City Hall. Uh, the mayor uh, never, we uh, came out here initially with the demands for the mayor to have a press conference to speak on the ongoing police brutality, police terrorism that took place uh, throughout the spring and the summer and then beginning of the fall with Tyrus Jones being shot uh, in Rockford, Illinois in 2020. Uh, he declined to have a uh, uh, have a press conference and answer questions from the media. He instead chose to release a Facebook statement in which he did not even re uh, say the name of the young man who had been shot. Uh, so we stayed outside of City Hall City uh, uh, throughout uh, October and then throughout November. In November, uh, the Winnebago Boone Integrity Task Force justified the shooting of Tyrus Jones. Uh, he was uh, Tyrus Jones. Uh, subsequently, uh, in the midst of all of these things happening, was. Uh, a, a charge with a uh, uh, was charged with a, a murder. I don't know what the very. I don't know what the specific. Uh, excuse me. I don't know what the specific charge is. I don't want to uh, make statements that are uh, inaccurate. Uh, <clears throat> but it is the specific charge can be found. Uh, I believe, and I uh, uh, because of uh, what Tyrus Jones uh, subsequently was charged with that there was a, a lack of empathy towards the situation, towards what happened to him. Uh, I believe that the withholding of the video, the dash camera video of Tyrus Jones being shot has also led to that lack of empathy and to that apathy. Uh, I personally uh, do not uh, agree with that uh, imp uh, lack of empathy and apathy. Uh, I believe that if somebody is, uh, we, uh, the system as it is uh, presently constructed is set up that is if you are, if you are accused of something, if somebody at the, uh, if the state's attorney and the police department believe that you have committed a crime, they have a system set up in which you are arrested for the crime, you go to jail, you stand trial for the crime, and if you are found guilty, uh, you are sentenced for the crime. Uh, in that system that is set up, the police officer and the police department is not set up to be, to supersede that and to decide on the streets if somebody is guilty and, and decide on the streets if somebody, what the penalty or the sentencing is for somebody that they deem to be guilty. Uh, I think that in a, I've said this before, and I'll continue to say it in a city where last year we had the most murders that had most homicides that had ever taken place uh, in the city. I believe it was a record breaking number. I believe we live we will be living in a very dangerous territory if we allow and we become uh, 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 lethargic about police officers and, uh, and, and, and law enforcement institutions uh, bringing in people who are accused of crime dead or alive. Uh, when you have 
a high rate of, vi of, vi of shootings and a high rate of violent crimes taking place. If we get to a, a point in which we do not care if a person, as long as they are uh, believed to have done something or accused to have done something or are going to be arrested for doing something, if we get to a place where we don't no longer care about their life and no longer care uh, whether they come in uh, a hole or not, uh, we will be in a very dangerous place and that will begin to touch people who are innocent of crimes. People get arrested uh, every day uh, who did not commit the crime in which they are being arrested for. People have warrants put out for them every day in which uh, they did not commit the crime in which the warrant has been an uh, issue for them. And so, again, I believe that uh, people should be brought in in whole, in one piece. Uh, whether the person is black, whether the person is white, whether the person uh, is straight, whether the person is gay, whether the person is Muslim, whether the person is Christian, uh, none of those things matter. People should be brought in whole. Uh, so, uh, the shooting was justified. There was not a, a, a lot of national attention around the shooting of Tyrus Jones. There was not a, a humongous uh, community outpour and outcry. Uh, and it was for some of those things that I just listed. Uh, so uh, us as an organization, it doesn't say this is on my personal Facebook page, but uh, I'm part of the organization, the May 30th Alliance. Uh, us as a, uh, a organization, we decided that the steps we were going to take uh, was going to be to continue the occupation of City Hall, uh, to continue to uh, to be to continue to address the issue of police terrorism and mass incarceration and racial injustice in the community of Rockford to continue to address it directly with the powers that be in Rockford directly with the building and the institution in Rockford that being the Rockford government and the building being City Hall uh, the building and the institution uh, which uh, perpetuate these things, whether they perpetuate them through uh, direct uh, policy uh, procedures or direct actions that they do, or whether they uh, uh, perpetuate it through uh, uh, indirect actions as far as being just being complicit or as far as uh, allowing racial injustices to go on. Of course, the people who work inside of City Hall uh, and the mayor are not the people who have murdered themselves and shot the people uh, that we have memorials for on these polls. Uh, the mayor did not shoot Tyrus Jones himself. He did not pull the trigger on Tyrus Jones himself. However, uh, the law enforcement uh, agency, which is under his control, uh, the police department, which he has a, uh, a, a symbiotic relationship with, uh, they are responsible. Their, their officers have done these things and their officers have done these things repeatedly. Uh, and it is an issue that uh, because it affects a very specific uh, uh, a very specific uh, community and that community is not necessarily uh, a, a, a heavily voting community or they don't uh, move as a block because of the lack of power uh, that the black community uh, in Rockford has and in Winnebago County has, uh, the lack of power that the poor community or working class community in Rockford and Winnebago County has, uh, it allows it for these things to happen and it be no true uh, system or no true uh, procedure or no true program set up to combat uh, a state sanctioned violence coming down onto any citizen at any point in time. Uh, and so, again, the city of Rockford is responsible for, again, either allowing those things to happen uh, by being complicit or by turning the uh, other, you know, turning the other, uh, turning the blind eye to it, or they engage in those things happening. Uh, one of the things, I'll let this, uh, let these cars go by real quick. I always feel the need, you know, it's hard to just uh, all of a sudden just jump up and just uh, speak on the one uh, present uh, issue at hand. It always feels like I, I always feel the need to try to uh, go back and speak on, you know, how we got to this point so people can understand the, the hold on, the severity of the issue. Oh, this a red. He got a red. He gonna be loud. Maybe not. Uh, and so I say all those things to say uh, we decided to continue the occupation of City Hall. Uh, so we stayed here through uh, all of October, through all of November, uh, through all of December, uh, and then in January, on January 5th, uh, you can't see it right now, but a young man, Denzel Duvant, uh, was, and this is something that can be found on my personal Facebook page if you look through photos and posts. Uh, it can also be found on the May 30th Alliance Facebook page if you look through photos and posts on the May 30th Alliance Twitter, the May 30th Alliance Instagram. Let this, let them go by. Uh,
Yeah, yeah. All the bikes is passing by. It's been it's heavy. The warmer the day, the the more the, like the quadruple the bikes. Every ten degrees warmer it is, you get four times as many bikes. How you doing? Uh, okay, so uh, again, we stay. We decided to stay here January fifth. Denzel Duvant was assaulted by the Rockford Police Department. Uh, the same officer who shot Dominic McNeese. Uh, excuse me. The same officer who shot uh, Tyrus Jones. Uh, officer Dominic McNeese who was justified in the shooting of Tyrus Jones. Uh, he shot Tyrus Jones October uh, 3rd, uh, October 2nd. Uh, he was justified in the shooting of Tyrus Jones at the end of November. By the beginning of December, he was back to work. And then in the first week of January, first week of the new year, January 5th, uh, 2021, uh, he was involved in the assault of Denzel Duvant. Uh, when he shot Tyrus Jones, love, bro. I'm going to holla at you, man. Love, for real, bro. Uh, when he shot Tyrus Jones, uh, the statement that he gave was that uh, he believed that he saw Tyrus Jones with a gun. He thought Tyrus Jones had a gun. Uh, when Denzel Duvant was uh, assaulted and beat, uh, the police report read that uh, uh, he believed that uh, uh, that uh, Officer Dominic Menise believed that uh, Tyrus Jones, excuse me, that Denzel Duvant had a weapon, had a gun. So it was the same story. Uh, the result ended up being uh, maybe uh, physically uh, getting shot and getting beat don't look the same, uh, but still, nonetheless, it was uh, traumatization was done to somebody uh, physically and mentally and psychologically that had yet to be found guilty in a court of law. And it was done because uh, police officers decided to take the law into their own hand and be the judge, jury and executioner on the street. Uh, so we stayed here through that uh, because it was not a shooting. Uh, and because it was not uh, a death, he didn't, uh, Denzel Duvant did not die. Uh, there was no investigation into Denzel Duvant being assaulted and beat. Uh, the Winnebago Boone Integrity Task Force was not activated. That is something that's only activated uh, for a shooting or for uh, some type of a, a death, in custody death. Uh, so no, there was no consequences at all for anybody for what happened to Denzel Duvant. Uh, so we stayed out here through that. Uh, we stayed here through January, through February, through March, uh, and then into April. Uh, on April 10th, uh, Faustin Guaytigo was murdered by uh, Winnebago County Sheriff Deputy uh, Brulard, I believe is how you pronounce his name. It was a team of deputies who all uh, very similar to what happened to Breonna Taylor. And uh, I, I can't remember the uh, name of the uh, I mean, he, uh, multiple of these incidents happen where there are multiple officers on the scene. And, uh, you know, that's and this is where we get back into the, you know, and I hate to do the. <clears throat> I hate to have to uh, do sidebars, but this is where we get into the concept of uh, no good cops in a racist system or there is no, you know, there are no good cops. It's not about just bad apples uh, because in, in multiple of these incidents where uh, there are either in custody deaths or there are assaults or in custody assaults or there are uh, officer involved shootings. There's multiple officers who are on the scene uh, who all either are complicit in enabling the main officer who was who uh who uh either end up ends up doing the shooting or the murdering or ends up doing the violent act themselves they either are complicit in enabling him or they're in complicit in they they turn the uh the turn the you know turn a blind eye uh, and they don't stop this person uh and so you know that's when you get to the idea that you know if it's one bad cop uh, and he's on a team or a unit and there's seven cops in a team and unit and all the other six let the one bad cop do whatever it is that he pleases uh don't you now have seven bad cops uh and so that's what happened with uh Faustin Guaytigo each officer that was there on the scene uh all bear some type of responsibility uh for not de-escalating the situation for not trying to preserve life uh too often uh especially in this city uh because uh because police officers are workers of violence when they come into situations uh, they are only the only life that they uh, truly care to preserve is the life of their is their own life especially when the people that they are interacting with uh, seem foreign to them or when the people that they are interacting with uh, are not uh, are not from a community in which they have uh, co uh, close connections or ties to uh, they only care about you know themselves preserving preserving their own life uh, and so nobody cared about preserving the life of Faustin Guaytigo. Nobody cared about uh, the future, truly the future of uh, Faustin Guaytigo's wife or Faustin Guaytigo's children. Because if they did truly care about the future of them, uh, they would know that uh, just like just like domestic violence in a household is not uh, uh, something that can lead is a healthy environment for a child. Neither is, uh, and very much more so is. Uh, Go by. Uh, very much more so is uh, the murder of a parent being done inside of a household. They're very much more so is the murder uh, 
of a spouse of a of a husband uh, inside of the household much more than uh, uh, the the domestic violence issue is. And so, uh, and I only say that again for the people who. Uh, as time as, as these stories have came out and developed, and more information has uh, uh, more information has come out from some of these uh, from the Faust and Guaytigo, uh, uh from the murder of Faust and Guaytigo, uh That's some of the the response or some of the uh, reaction uh, uh, from people, uh, especially you know, and these are people for the most part who truly don't even, no matter what the situation was, they would find a fault, a fault with. Uh, the victim, they will find fault with the person who was killed by the police because they're institutionalized uh, and, and conditioned to think that police departments and police officers and uh, government institutions can do no wrong uh, or are always in the right. Uh, and so uh, certain people you will never be able to reach. But I do want to, for certain people who may uh, be on the fence or certain people who feel like, well, they don't agree with people with domestic violence. They don't agree with someone uh, being accused of, uh, of, of assaulting their wife or assaulting their loved one. Uh, again, if the reason you don't, the reason that you uh, don't agree with that is because you think it is unhealthy for the person who is being victimized, which it is. If you think it's unhealthy for the children who are there and being traumatized, which, which of course it is, uh, think about how much more unhealthy uh, the murder of that person is inside of their home. Think about how much more uh, uh, traumatizing the murder is uh, of, of the person inside of that home. How much, you know, you can never recover, if, if, and not to say that you recover from domestic violence, because that's not at all what I'm saying, but you can never recover uh, from, these children will never recover from not being able to know their father. Uh, this woman will never be up, this woman will never recover from uh, being there and being witness to the murder of her husband. Uh, and then unfortunately, because of the lack of true transparency and true accountability and even any type of monicum of restoration in this community, uh, there will be no justice to try to help her along with the passage of these, this grief and these emotions. Uh, so if you do truly care, uh, if you do truly care about the person who uh, domestic violence may be affecting and you don't just ha aren't just out for blood or just out for some type of uh, sadistic punishment, uh, then you understand that the murder of Faustin uh, just compounds the domestic violence issue. It does not uh, 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 cancel it out or get rid of it. <clears throat> so I just wanted to, again, and that's not to, and I don't think that, what is, where is I go by? I honestly don't even think that it's a, a, a uh, uh, I don't even think that is truly conducive to the gravity of the situation at hand. Uh, I don't think that is truly conducive uh, to to the uh, issue at hand uh, to uh, take time to, uh, in the midst of someone being murdered, to try to clarify to people uh, why uh, a murder, why a domestic, uh, somebody be having a domestic violence uh a domestic situation in which violence has occurred, uh, that should not, that is not equal or, 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 or uh, uh, man, this is crazy. A car went down the wrong way. I'm sorry. A car went down the wrong way on the one way. I lost my train of thought. Uh, okay. So anyways, I spent enough time on that. My whole, my point is I only wanted to speak on that because people are bringing up this argument. I don't think that the argument, I think the argument is completely unfounded, but I still want to, for anybody who may, uh, watch this at whatever point in time and that may be something that they feel conflicted about I did want to at least take the time to try to speak on it uh, So that was April 10th Fountain Guaytigo was murdered uh, after a domestic uh, domestic call domestic violence call was made uh, The video is on the May 30th Alliance Facebook page and Twitter page uh, and Instagram page uh, We don't have the I've shared that video. I've asked people to share the video uh, it is not out of any type of desire to profit off of black trauma or to profit off of black death or, or to pe perpetuate black trauma or to normalize or destigmatize uh, black trauma or anything like that. It is simply uh, due, uh, due to the fact that uh, so many people, even within our own city, don't know that uh, Faust and Guaytigo was murdered, uh, don't know that these videos have been released. They haven't even, uh, we have to get to a place where at least people have, where force people to at least make a decision about how they feel, force people to have to have some type of uh, belief pattern about how they feel about some of these things because too often people just don't even know about them uh, to begin to address the issue. Uh, and I believe that 
Uh, I don't believe that that's something that's done accidentally. I think that that's something done purposefully. Uh, I believe institutions want people to have a lack of knowledge because and the lack of information uh, because the least the less knowledge and less information you have, the less questions that you ask uh, and the less questions that you ask, the less answers that they have to come up with. Uh, and when it when you start to truly uh, look into uh, uh, police terrorism and the manners in which uh, it, it affects the community, uh, there are a lot of questions to be asked. When you start to truly look at uh, mass incarceration uh, and the manner and the gravity in which it affects uh, communities, not just one specific community, but all communities, and then when you look into how it affects all communities, you see which communities it affects disproportionately. Uh, you have a lot of questions and uh, answers. You, know, you have a lot of questions and it forces these institutions who perpetuate these things, usually without any pushback or any challenge, uh, to have to start coming up with answers, to have to start uh, dealing with pushback, to have to start dealing with being challenged on these issues. Uh, and so... <clears throat> uh, uh, after April 10th passed, the Fausto Guaytigo was murdered. Uh, April 11th uh, comes up and Jose Gonzalez Jr. Uh, is shot by the Rafa Police Department. He's shot by uh, Rafa Police Department Officer Owen McGinnis. Uh, he's shot as he's running away, the same way that Tyrus Jones was shot, the same way that uh, multiple people within Rockford and in Winnebago County have been shot by officers uh, running away. Uh, not by uh, being an imminent threat. You know, one of the things that uh, has been uh, the argument uh, for the pro-police people or the anti-black people has been this idea that Faustin was murdered because he was, uh, because he stood his ground or because he did not go backwards or because he posed a threat uh, to the officers uh, that day. Uh, and then the very next day, somebody does the opposite. He runs away. He's trying to get away. He's trying to uh, be as least as a threat as possible, Jose Gonzalez Jr., uh, and he shot as well. So it lets you know that there is not, it's not truly, uh, let me let these cars go on. I think they did that just for us. It's hard to tell which cars just like want their cars to be loud and which cars is like racist people trying to make their cars loud. Or sometimes people make their cars loud and support. All three of those things is real confusing try to figure out it's the same thing with honking like sometimes somebody would drive by honking you don't know if it's an agreement or a disagreement if they racist or they all right uh, i'm on i'm off on a tangent i'm gonna get something to drink real quick just give me three like 20 seconds i'm gonna get a drink i'm right back So, okay, so that was April 11th. Jose Gonzalez Jr. shot while he's running away. Uh, and then, uh, okay, so Jose Gonzalez Jr. shot April 11th as he's running away by uh, Officer Owen McGinnis, uh, the Rafa Police Department. Uh, there's been dash camera video footage release of the chase. Uh, there's been a new, for both of these things, uh, for both of these things, for the murder of Faustin Guaytigo, there's news stories that's been released. The uh, body camera video footage has been released. Uh, there's been follow-up and subsequent news stories from WREX, WIFR, and Rafa Register Star. Uh, you can visit all their social media sites, their social media platforms, uh, or their online platforms. And, I, and you can find some of these stories if you want to have... Uh, you know, it's only, you know, I can only go into, I'm trying to touch on a bunch of different things. So it's very important information that I'm leaving out in this rundown. So uh, please do go get informed for yourself. I don't want anybody to think that uh, in this specific video, I have a desire to uh, misinform or uh, uninform or not give enough information to people. I'm really honestly just trying to, for anybody who may not know these things have happened, uh, to let them know some of these things are going on so they can find out more information about it themselves. Again, too often the issue in Rockford has been that people don't know that these things are happening for them to even uh, decide how they feel about them and then to decide what course of action they want to take about uh, maybe uh, solving these issues. So our job right now has been to uh, be the, uh, the messengers uh, and get this message out to people that these things are happening. Uh, so 
Same thing for Jose Gonzalez Jr. There's a dash camera video footage that's been released. Uh, there's news stories that's been released. Uh, there, uh, you can go to WIFR, WREX, uh, uh, Route for Register Star, uh, all of these different places, and you can find uh, uh, more information about these things. Uh, so, <clears throat> Jose Gonzalez Jr. shot April 11th. Uh, on that same at, on that same day, uh, Dante Wright is uh, murdered in uh, Brooklyn Center, uh, Minnesota, uh, and that was something that uh, gained national coverage uh, a lot because of the proximity that Brooklyn Center had to Minneapolis, uh, or excuse me, the Brooklyn Center had to where the trial for Derek Chauvin was taking place, uh, and there, uh, you know, also uh, I believe they left the young man's body uh, on the uh, pavement on the concrete for an extended amount of time. Uh, people took to the streets, uh, and so. One of the uh, things that, you know, and again, I'm just trying to touch on multiple things. One of the uh, uh, challenges that we have had locally is the fact that a lot of people do know about what happened to Dante Wright. Uh, a lot of people uh, uh, has, have seen the video of Dante Wright, uh, the uh, body camera video footage in which the officer, I can't remember her name at the moment, uh, claimed she thought she had her taser and she shot Dante Wright. Uh, that is a lot more known, even, you know, the fast forward some, what happened to Makia Bryan and now what's going on in, I believe, North Carolina uh, with the young man who was uh, the dash camera video footage is asking to be released. But these things, these stories have been a lot more known than some of the stories that's taking place locally. Uh, and so that puts us in a position in which as important as it is to know about these national stories and these national names, uh, the same way it's important to know about who's running for uh, the president nationally and things like that, uh, it is also very important to know about what is happening. Hey, what's up? Uh, it's also important to know about what is happening uh, locally and what is happening specifically uh, to here. Uh, and so I think that uh, one of our challenges has been to make sure that when people uh, do people who do know about Dante Wright that we can also inform them and ask them do they know about uh, Faust and Guaytigo? Uh What up? What up? Uh, people who do know about uh, what happened to uh, Makia Bryant, we can inform them and ask them if they know about what happened to Jose Gonzalez Jr. Uh, and so uh, again, please go and find out more information about all of these things. Uh, so that you know was Sunday, uh, and then uh, we go into uh, Monday and Tuesday of last week. And uh, on Monday they gave the closing arguments for the uh, the trial of Derek Chauvin. Uh, and then uh, on the Tuesday following up, uh, the verdict came out for Derek Chauvin, and Derek Chauvin was found to uh, be guilty on all three counts uh, that he was charged with. Uh, and uh, there were a lot of people who took that as uh, a victory and took that as uh, a very uh, a momentous, momentous uh, uh, achievement. Uh, and I, but there was also people, uh, again, I don't want to generalize too much. There were also people who understood, you know, and I, I fall in this in the latter, uh, who understood that this was not, let this bus go by, who understood uh, that this was not that momentous victory, uh, who, you know, but specifically, you know, here in Rockford, Illinois, uh, it couldn't be, I could never, we, we could never truly see it that way uh, because that someone had just been murdered, you know, the weekend before. Uh, and, hold on, let me. Uh, and part of the, and in, in, in truth, part of part of this uh, justice and this problem truly being solved and taking a step forward is, you know, a year's going, a, a full calendar length of a year going by and it being less people being murdered uh, significantly. A full calendar year going by and it being uh, police officers and law enforcement agents and these and white vigilantes who have engaged in these murderous actions, seeing a plethora of them not only be charged, but then also be convicted uh, for the for their crimes. Uh, and, and so I and so I do agree. And then even that, uh, you know, also poses, you know, once you start getting to the, the concept and the idea of restoration, uh, just locking up a bunch of police officers for killing black people and killing people in the streets, but then letting the whole next uh, bevy of them keep doing the same thing is also not uh, justice or, you know, or solution or fixing the problem. So we have to uh, collectively, uh, the consciousness and the, 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 uh, the society has to shift. You know, the things that are, are uh, prioritized in the society have to shift. Uh, and right now, black life is not prioritized in the society. And it is a multiple uh, lay of reasonings for those things. It is not, you know, just simply uh, policing. Uh, but there's a, a, a multiple. There's a list of institutions uh, that all contribute to the idea of, of uh, black life not being prioritized in the society. Uh, and that's what leads us to, uh, you know, murders like Makia Bryant, where 
I 100% believe that if Makia Bryant was a young white woman uh, with that knife, that that same officer uh, runs his, uh, light, in light speed uh, and takes takes just as much pride as he took in shooting her uh, in, you know, with such precision. He takes that same pride in tackling her and not allowing her to stab somebody else and putting himself on, you know, in, in danger uh, in the midst of trying to do these things. But because he does not value the life of Makia Bryant, because uh, uh, the society tells him that Makia's Bryant, Makia Bryant's life is not valuable, uh, he just goes to shooting her. Uh, uh, because he sees a threat, he just neutralizes the threat in the manner in which he, he feels like is the best way, uh, as opposed to uh, getting out of that car and seeing two uh, young, uh, uh, seeing a young woman, uh, and seeing uh, women and seeing humans and seeing people in the midst of uh, uh, of, a, of a violent uh, events, and instead of trying to escalate the violence, does everything in his power to de-escalate the violence. If that was uh, Makia Bryant was his daughter, and the person that Makia Bryant was about to stab was uh, his his other daughter and his two daughters uh, I believe that he does something to try to preserve the life of both daughters uh, and again that is that's the and that goes against the this, this same idea of uh, when people bring up black on uh, this idea, this myth of black on black crime, which is just a uh, crime in general, or black on black violence, which is just violence in general because of community proximity is uh, community violence. What's up? What's up, man? Now you good? Uh, yeah, uh, May 30th Alliance. Yep. All right, for sure, bro. Y'all be safe out here. Uh, you know, which is the same, you know, when people try to bring up the idea of uh, the young seven-year-old girl who was uh, killed in Chicago. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Uh, I don't know her name uh, off the top of my head. Again, there's so many uh, names to have to remember with all of these news cycles and mass shootings and uh, shootings and this violence in general. But it's this idea that uh, people think that... Uh, you, if it has to be one or the other, as if black people, uh, you have to you have to choose whether uh, you want to get rid of police terrorism or whether you want to find a way to get rid of uh, inner community violence. Uh, you want to get rid of mass incarceration or get rid of inner community violence or racial injustice or inner community violence. And uh, in honesty, inner community violence is a side effect of police terrorism and is a side effect of mass incarceration is and is a side effect of racial injustice. Uh, you know, there's there's. Uh, a thousand layers to try to go through, you know, and this is not, you know, I'm not making this specific video to try to dissect all of those layers. Uh, I'm only touching on this to say that uh, when if black life was truly valued, uh, people would not weigh uh, two situations against each other to say, well, you should care more about this. Uh, there is not when, you know, when on breast cancer during breast cancer month, nobody butts in and says you should care more about Alzheimer's uh, when people have the. Uh, when September 11 pops up, nobody pops up and says you should care more about Hiroshima. Uh, when uh, the 4th of July in this country, when the 4th of July pops up, nobody comes and says you should care more about the Chinese New Year. Uh, so this idea, uh, and that's because those things are valued. You know, that's what you do. You know, when you, uh, if you have a, a son and your son is going through something and they're going through a, uh, a traumatic uh, experience and you have multiple children uh, when your son's going through the traumatic experience and you're focusing on your son in the traumatic experience uh, you don't you know you don't weigh out the time and say well you know what I spent too much time with him let me go spend more time with this other kid uh, or you know because you value both you value both of them and you understand that in valuing both of them uh, and you in valuing both of them you can pay more attention to trying to solve and fix one issue without that meaning that you're neglecting the other issue. Uh, one thing can be prioritized with the understanding that this thing, uh, this the, the, the son that's having this uh, a uh, specific issue is causing turmoil throughout the whole house uh, when you know because he's so angry he's slamming doors he got the music up loud he depressed and now the whole energy of the whole house uh, is 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 devolving uh, because of a specific problem that this child has and so instead of trying to fix all the ways that this child's uh, uh, specific issue is now affecting the household if you focus on fixing that specific issue on that child it will get you four or five steps to fixing all the side effects that's happened uh, the child can even help you with fixing those side effects. Uh, and so that is where we stand, where, uh, uh, you know, and maybe that's not the best analogy. You know, I, that's just how my mind works. But that is where we stand, where uh, truly addressing the issue of police terrorism in communities uh, will address uh, 
uh, education in communities. Defund because addressing police terrorism means uh, uh, stop allowing police officers to be uh, workers of violence in situations in which violence is not necessary. Uh, once you start taking violence out of certain specific uh, societal issues, you stop needing police officers, which stops let allowing them to have power in situations in which they shouldn't have power. Uh, people who are unhoused, police officers should not be called on them. Uh, that, that's a whole section of money that can be contributed uh, to housing those people. People who have addictions, police officers should not be called, called for them. Uh, that is a whole section of money that can be uh, sectioned off to uh, treating that like a, a, a true health crisis and fixing that societal issue uh, and then getting you steps ahead of fixing uh, what, may, what may become violence from the black market of drugs. Uh, and so, and again, I'm, I'm touching on these things on a very uh, uh, surface level, uh, uh, surface level you know and I'm scratching on a very surface level uh, uh, part right now you know and so it is a lot of these things there's books that you can look into deeper uh, you know because of the specific issue that's at hand uh, I want to do the disservice of having a, a great a great uh, a long rant uh, that doesn't you know uh, center on me still focusing on what the main issue is you know and the main issue is uh, you know, Faustin Guaitigo being murdered on April 10th. The main issue is uh, on April 11th, uh, uh, Officer Owen McGinnis uh, <clears throat> uh, shooting uh, Jose Gonzalez Jr. while he was running. Uh, and so when, once we address those specific issues and we, once we can get people to care about those specific issues, uh, then the things that perpetuate those issues, we can now focus people's attention on. Uh, and so we have to heighten the awareness of the community and of the city uh, about the uh, about the events that took place on April 10th and the events that took place on April 11th, uh, and then once again, once we get the community engaged into those, uh, we retroactively uh, communicate to them what happened to Denzel Duvant, communicate to them what happened to Tyrus Jones, communicate to them what happened to Mikey Guzman, communicate to them what happened uh, to the list of people who have been uh, affected by this uh, three-headed monster of uh, police terrorism, mass incarceration, and racial injustice in Rockford, in Winnebago County. You know, and there's a bunch of Rockford and Winnebago counties all over uh, where these issues have not truly even taken a, a full steps towards being eradicated. Uh, and so here we stand uh, as the end of April is coming up and we're beginning May uh, where uh, the the spring is in and seems to be in full effect. Today it was about I think uh, 80 maybe 80 degrees somebody I think I've seen somewhere. Uh, so a lot of people the weather was have been a hindrance as to why they could not be involved and that's something that I, I understand fully 100% uh, a lot of people because of the specific action of us really just occupying City Hall uh, maybe that was not something that they uh, 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 felt comfortable being involved with uh, but as we're going forward now uh, one of the things I hope anybody's watching this please go to the May 30th Alliance Facebook page May 30th Alliance Twitter page May 30th Alliance Instagram page uh, we have events going forward for uh, the entirety of the uh, month of May uh, the first weekend that's coming up here in May on Saturday and Sunday uh, we will have uh, on Saturday and Sunday we'll have uh, events here on Saturdays we'll have the events at 3 uh, on Sundays we'll have the events at 4 uh, for now the location will be starting a city rally in a city hall uh, but we will put different locations for some of those things uh, the number the amount of numbers that we get will be contingent on the actions that we do uh, but I think that is an important it's, it's very important and this is something that we've said for the past two weeks excuse me past three weeks going into three weeks uh, since Faustin Guaitigo was murdered and Jose Gonzalez Jr. was shot down uh, is that we want more people to know every uh, seven days than knew the previous seven days. Uh, and I believe that uh, and part of that happening is uh, getting people together, organizing and mobilizing people, uh, whether that be 10 people, 50 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, and trying to get those people onto the same page uh, and get those people uh, onto, uh, with the, comfortable with the same tactics to take steps forward to continue to get each week more people to know about what it is that's happened to Faust and Guaytigo, Jose Gonzalez Jr., and then the implications that that has on us as a community and as a society in Rockford, Illinois, and in Winnebago County. Uh, and so 
Uh, we have, uh, for anybody who is maybe paying attention or who has not paid attention, you can feel free to go back to my page and see these things or to the May 30th Alliance page and see these things. Uh, we've marked in chalk on the sidewalks of City Hall, marked in chalk on the sidewalks uh, of Winnebago County Administration Building uh, to address the institutions uh, which allow their law enforcement agencies to perpetuate this violence on two communities and have continued uh, through different administrations to allow this violence to be perpetuated on the communities with uh, no true uh, challenge to it, with no true accountability or restoration or justice coming from it. Uh, and so what up, what up, what up? Uh, and so again, this is one of those things that I want people to uh, uh, please, please, uh, go back and watch those things and then figure out in which space and which level you can uh, exist in, which which revo which revolutionary uh, actions can you take uh, uh, that you are comfortable with. Is it riding in chalk? Is it marching in the streets? City market is coming up. Is it participating in protest the city market? Uh, and again, I think that that's something that's very important. You know, I'll make a separate live trying to touch on that. But uh, so I want people to know going forward in May, every Saturday and Sunday, there will be an event. Uh, May 30th uh, Alliance will host an event uh, Saturdays and Sun Saturdays at uh, 3, Sundays at 4. Uh, at City Hall, we down here every single day, so uh, feel free to come out any day and uh, engage in dialogue. We're going to have some, uh, some, we have some Winnebago Boone Integrity Task Force pamphlets that we created. We're going to start having those and more abundance to be able to pass out to people. Uh, We've continued, you know, let these months out go by. We continue, we'll continue every day. We've written in chalk. We'll continue to write in chalk. Uh, and again, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, based on the amount of numbers that we have, you know, we'll address and change our actions and mobilize uh, based on our numbers. Uh, and so uh, one of the things that we've been doing, too, is all through social media and the comments, we've been leaving uh, hashtags, justice for Faustin, hashtag Faustin Guaytigo, hashtag justice for Jose, uh, hashtag Jose Gonzalez. Uh, so please continue to do that. Please share this video. Uh, this phone about to die. Uh, I'm gonna try to start making these lives more often and more regularly. Uh, all right, y'all. I'm gonna I'm gonna holler at y'all. We outside.